Hello. Good evening, my friend. <laughs> I mean, good morning from here. <laughs> <laughs> How you been, brother? Pretty good. How about you? Yeah, good. Good man. Good to talk to yeah. you. Yeah, as always. Likewise. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's we we talk quite frequently these days. <laughs> yes, yeah. We There's do. always something going on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's good, man. It's good. It's always good to have you on. Mm. Uh, yeah. Mate, thanks for joining us again, as always. And uh, the Night Flight Orchestra are finally, finally coming to Australia. Yeah. I think exactly. I've been finally bugging you about this for a long, long time. So, uh, yeah. Finally happening, man. Yeah. Beautiful, right? Yeah. I'm so pumped. Yeah. Yeah. Me, me too. Me too. And the whole band. I mean, it, this was sort of, you know, I, 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 even back when we released like second album, when things started to happen, I was like, I think, I wonder if we one day can get to, to Australia. And it's like, uh, probably not, but it's like, here we, you know, here we are. It's uh, unbelievable. Really cool. We were just here. So that was. Yeah. In November. So yeah. Which, which is actually a lot longer than you actually think it is. You know, I don't know. I know. Right. <laughs> it's <laughs> like, it was it was like two months ago and you're like oh fuck oh. i know that's what it feels like you know it's, it's crazy man, man. Yeah. but i i guess it, it's a totally different experience and that's what i'm looking yeah. forward to you know how would you yeah. describe because we, we haven't seen night flight down here how would you describe the experience compared to seeing soil work well, it's a bit more of a, of a dance party, I would say, <laughs> than, than with soil work. Nothing wrong with dancing to soil work, but but it's uh, I don't know. It's 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 just it's a bit of a different vibe. Uh, it's a bit more of a celebration, I guess. And and uh, and I mean, for people who have heard our music, you know, and listened to our albums and songs, uh, these songs really come alive on stage. Like it's really. <laughs> on a whole different level and and uh, you know with a band you know the backup singers and uh, the vibe is just electric you know it's uh, it's, it has a really unifying factor as well with this band you know because when we play in europe it's like you know there's prog dads hipsters 14 year old girls with braces and and like metal heads with behemoth patches like all at, at, <laughs> at the same show they normally don't go to the same show and you can s sort of see that in their faces like oh what are you doing here i was gonna ask you the same thing kind of deal and and then you know by the end of the night everybody's dancing together you know and i know it sounds real pretentious but that that's really what what happens sometimes you know it's 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 really cool to see and it, i can't wait to uh be a part of that i'll be wearing my battle jacket and i'll be in there shaking my because i think that yeah there you go yeah. simplify it i guess soil work is for banging your head and night flight is for shaking your ass so it's kind of the best of yeah. worlds you know i guess yeah yeah i guess yeah yeah that works <laughs> but uh you know of, of course both bands uh i guess a, a expression of your your personality do you feel there's a difference in yourself when you're up there performing with night flight compared to soil work is there a different personality change within yourself yeah i think there's more of the kid in me I think with with the Night Flight Orchestra, even though I mean I started soil work when I was like pretty much a kid. Yeah, but uh, I'm not so angry anymore. <laughs> so it's uh, you know it it it's, it's a different vibe, and it kind of I guess it takes me back, you know. And I, I that might sound like it's all about nostalgia, which it which it isn't. I mean that's that's of course a big factor, mm. you know? but. Uh, there's a, just a certain vibe that brings me back and, and it, it, everything becomes full circle with this band. I don't know. It's, it's, it's because I kind of, kind of randomly became a metal singer and I am a metal head. Don't get me wrong, you know, but yeah. it's uh, starting this band, everything kind of fell into place, you know, and, in, in, in many ways. And you recently opened for Kiss too. Like, holy. Yeah. Shit. Just a week ago. And I, I'm still sort of trying to digest that. It's just insane. You are glowing. I could see it in your face. You were glowing. Yeah. Or, man. Yeah. But <laughs> man, that is crazy. Opening for that, I, I yeah. saw pictures and just, it would have just felt like an out of body experience, dude. Like, it, it really was. And I'm just really grateful that it was two nights in a row. Because if, if it was just one night, I, I, I definitely wouldn't have, you know, understood what was going on. So, 
second night it kind of everything landed and you know and by the time we arrived with the, the van to the venue like paul stanley came out of his van and said hey what's going on guys how was last night's show and i was like this is insane this is like summer camp with kiss you know because i didn't even expect it to 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 meet them you know but you know gene simmons came into our dressing room said hi and was even dancing with one of the backup girls and and uh Doc McGee came in, you know, knocked on the door. Hey, my name is Doc McGee, and I really cool band you got there, and like shook our hands. Like, what is? Yeah, just surreal. The whole thing, and the venue. I don't know if you've seen the venue. It's like ba basically the Red Rocks of Sweden. You know, it's like it's like a hole in the ground, and it's like an amphitheater, crazy stage. So it was kind of intimate compared to what Kiss usually do. It was not. It's like it's still sort of an arena, but not your soccer arena, you know, something like that. It's just different and more intimate and they sounded fantastic, you know, and it was the very last two shows in Sweden, you know, unbelievable to be a part of that. It's just mind blowing. I saw them last year on their final, yeah. well, their kind of final, just training. <laughs> yeah. That's another yeah. one with Weezer yeah. and stuff, which is a massive lineup. I'm like, oh, damn. But, uh, man. Wow. Yeah, it's it's in incredible. Um, I wish I could go see him, but their stage show is just insane, man. That kind, I mean, yeah. you can do anything with that kind of coin, though. But what would you do? Would you have a big plane on stage? Say, if you had their budget, mm. your loner, would you have like a plane on stage, like deliver you? Absolutely, you hundred percent, seven forty seven. That'd be nice. <laughs> on stage. At least, at least the side of a seven forty seven, so we could actually, you know get off the plane like an intro down the you know the ladder whatever oh man that would be the best or the or, or the slide you know the, the emergency oh the slide yeah slide. how about slide <laughs> even better at least you can you can do anything yeah. oh man. yeah jonas comes down comes down with sliding with his drum kit <laughs> out from the airplane that would be amazing tommy lee couldn't do that shit there you go no no definitely not <laughs> But man, uh, uh, of course. Uh, sorry, that's my dog. She she's jumping on on the. Oh, what kind of dog is it? She's a labradoodle. Is she labradoodle? Okay. A labradoodle, but she do doesn't do what she's told, so we call her a labradoodle. Okay. No, because she's that's funny. She's the best, but brilliant. We love her. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Love dogs. <laughs> but I have uh, a corgi myself. Oh, do ya? Yeah. Just, yeah. Like how? How? Like little boy, little girl. Girl, seven years old, uh, and uh, yeah, I, I love corgis. They're just, I'm just obsessed. That little face, I know, man. Dog's yeah, best. yeah, yeah. Do you, do you take love him? Do you take him on tour? Uh, I wish, you know. And she's, she's unfortunately she's too heavy to get on, you know, go on a plane like carry on or whatever, you know. And I, I, I couldn't, I couldn't put her on the belly of the plane. Couldn't really do that, but. Uh, She's been on the tour bus, you know, paying a visit, but then, uh, you know, some people are allergic, so you can't really, oh. you know, travel with, yeah. But that would be, like, my own tour bus, which would be kind of boring in the end, but, you know, just to be able to bring my dog would would be fantastic. So you still do the shared bus thing? Absolutely, yeah. Wow. It has, I mean, with all the different personalities, you'd think. I, I guess yeah. all known each other for, for a million yeah. years anyway. But you know, it's yeah. like, I guess you get to know. So it's, it's always a social experiment, and you know, we we did two two uh, two months in Europe with with soil work and, and and sharing a bus with Cataclysm, and that's fifteen people in two months. You know, it's it's quite insane when you think about it. But uh, it worked out fine. People got sick, of course, and then it's kind of hard to get well again. And yeah, but uh, we got through, and we had fun doing it. That Cataclysm tour would have been unreal. They're good dudes. Yeah, they're really, really. Yeah, good dudes. yeah. No, no, no. We it was it was good hangs, you know. And and of course you have your, you know, they were usually hanging out in the in, in the the back lounge upstairs, and we were usually downstairs. But then you also hang out together, so it's like. But it's like if you're gonna you know be in the same bus for like two months, you know, you don't hang out always. But yeah, yeah, yeah. It was it was a good vibe, definitely. Yeah, I was talking to Marizia the other day. The other week. Oh yeah, cool. But yeah. Oh he, yeah, yeah. They're they're just releasing a new album now. So yeah. Oh man, you've probably heard it. 
Did he give you a sneak? No, I think I heard one song, like one single. It sounded oh, good. Man. Yeah, it's good. It's real mm-hmm. good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Real, real good. Good dudes. Good dudes. But um, yes. <laughs> of course, uh, you know, Night Flight has been going now for 16 years and released six incredible albums and uh, two at a bunch. But but does it seem like things now are starting to actually take off? With it, No pun intended, but, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I know I'm full of it, uh, but I'm, and I'm tired. <laughs> I know, yeah. Like I'm gonna, um, but yeah. Does it feel like it's? Yeah, like- I mean, we we know. That, I mean, at least in Europe, I think it's it started to happen with Amber, Amber Galactic, and I, I think a lot of people started picking up on on on, on the band at, at that time, and um, I guess also because we signed to Nuclear Blast and got more, you know, better distribution and all that, and uh, but uh, yeah, things are going pretty steady you know upwards and 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 uh yeah think you know just the fact that we're able to go to australia says something i think you know it's uh there's definitely a cool vibe and obviously doing the kiss shows as well got us some, some extra you know promotion there as well it's a big it's a big deal and um and you know it's it's, it's sort of it was quite unfortunate releasing aromantic one right by the time the COVID hit but i mean we were not alone so many other bands in the same situation so but um finally now we're able to tour for both aromantic one and two you know which are great albums and some you know we're really proud of those albums and and, and thankfully we can still tour for the, those albums and obviously we're uh, we also have a lot of gems from the other albums so it's uh yeah. but it's not easy to make a set list you know it's 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 always hard but uh yeah but it's, it really feels like we're, we're our, our fan base is really growing right now i i love those albums like i play them at work and uh, i got my mate baz who's who's uh an old roadie from from the the 80s did it did all did been there done that and he loves it too. He's like, "Oh, that's awesome!" I'm hopefully I'm going to do the Brisbane show. So, but have you noticed that the uh, that with Aromantic one and two, you know, with the the timelines that they were released, that people are starting to really gravitate to those songs now. That you're playing them live, and and you're noticing a bit more of a response to them. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, I, I would say so. People have really started to pick up on those albums, and and uh, these two albums are so varied too. You know, it's like, it's it's almost like a, a vibe where you could put them together as as a double album. You know, I, I can see myself releasing like re-releasing, it, not out of you know financial purposes, but just like how it kind of fits together. You know, and I think that would be cool. Is it to do? So maybe at some point we'll do that because they you you could definitely listen to like. You know, aromantic one, and then just, you know, and then go straight to number two. I would say, yeah, absolutely, and it would all make sense. You know, they were we're done. They were done around sort of like the same mindset and we, what was going on. So maybe that a could work. Hmm. like a vinyl. Maybe, maybe. Oh, have you got something planned? Is this no, no. But I mean, I, I, I think we, like, I think we, I think we should, you know, because I, yeah. I feel like they, and th- that's another reason because we were not done with aromantic, like with the aromantic sort of concept, and 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 then when we realized that we couldn't tour because we had a, had to cut our, you know, the, the first tour for aromantic one we had to cut short after one week because hmm. they closed down Spain and France and we had to go home. And then it's like, wait, wait a minute, we're not done here with Aromantic. So that's why we decided to do an Aromantic 2. So we could sort of tour for both albums once things open up. So that's where we are right now. But I think it would be cool with with a box set with some some really cool gadgets and stuff. That would be cool. Yeah. You, I think you plant you just planted a seed. We'll oh, because I, I promise there's nothing planned. So I, I'm not. You I know. thought you had a little twinkle in your eye, like it was. No, a, no, 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 no. Like, I promise, I promise, I promise. But I think that could be cool. Yeah. What would you have in the? You know, you get all the little extras in the box set. What would you have? Would you have a little passport? Would you have like? Yeah, a- exactly. Yeah. Like one of those kits that you get, like with with fresh socks and a toothbrush and and, yeah. and like uh, a, a, a face mask or a sleeping mask or whatever it's called. Uh, yeah, and that, that could be cool. You, you got to have the uh, the picture with you know it's like the emergency exit. Yes, the, one of them. Yes, <laughs> yes. Don't listen to me. That's why. Yeah, yeah. Like, 
I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to do the rest of the interviews today. As my mind is just going to be somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But uh, man, mm. one thing I did uh want to mention was recently released a single, a sensation, which I think is a absolutely just a beautiful tribute, mate. That's thanks, mate. I, I recently, I recently lost a really good friend of mine, and I've noticed that uh, there were there are certain songs now that just take on a new meeting and just mm. i don't know what, what the i don't know how to describe it man but maybe brighter i've just got a stronger connection have you found that with certain songs yourself especially with the ones you wrote with yeah i mean it's uh i think we you know me me and david we were really different as people we we, we were very close uh and but I think we communicated the best through music and melodies. You know, that's where we had, that was the real beauty of our, our relation, I would say, you know, and, uh, and of course we could, we could talk to each other about anything, you know, but we're really different and we were not always sort of, you know, not saying that we're fighting that much, but we, we had different views on things and, and, but at the same time, I think that's what made, like, created an interesting contrast. And I think we communicated really well with music and we learned a lot from each other. I mean, especially me, I, I guess I learned a bit more from David because he was already a brilliant, you know, songwriter, you know, and I learned a lot from him. And I've I've grown grown a lot as a songwriter as well, you know, on, on, on my own. But he's constantly there, you know, he's always present. And it's still hard to um, understand that he's not here anymore. It's like, wait a minute, he's not here. Like, how is that even possible? It's like, I, I don't think I've accepted it yet. But all I know is that he's very present, whatever, you know, I'm, I'm doing when it comes to music. And, and also, you know, being in the studio with a band, uh, which we did when we recorded a sensation. And I wrote that song and and with, with him in mind and, and sort of our, our travels together, you know, and... Um, being in the studio without him was special. He was he was always there, you know. And and we were kind of, I don't know, kind of nervous of how how we would feel to enter the studio. Is you know, is is, is it gonna feel weird? Is it gonna feel like is, is the magic on? But it was it was it was quite the opposite. It was sort of like a morale booster somehow, and it created a vibe. And he he was always present. You could always see him walking in the corridors of the studio, and and and. Um, yeah, it, it it just turned into something really beautiful, and and we recorded like three or four tracks, and they're all really great, and everybody had so much fun, and we had a lot of a lot of laughs, you know, looking back at at things that he said or did, and yeah, it was it was great. Thank you for sharing that, man. I, I appreciate mm. that. Um, and I'm sorry for your loss. Oh, and that's that's cool. <laughs> it's you know, it's just it's one of those things in life, I guess. Um, yeah, yeah, but uh, of course, you just mentioned there's more tracks, there's more on the way, obviously. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I think we're going to release two more singles, uh, and then that, that's going to lead up to, to the next album, which will most likely be released sometime in the spring, probably like April, May. Um, so yeah, that's you know, I've, I'm, we're gonna have a recording session in September as well and finish up things. So it's 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 sounding really good. I'm keen. Any mm. any sneaky peeks while you're down here? You reckon you? Uh, in there? Or? No, not really. I mean, we're doing sensation. I can give you that yeah. much, but but that's already <laughs> out. But but uh, oh. but as far as other tracks, no, no, I don't think we'll have the tracks out by then. So I yeah. That's yeah, it's it's quite a, it's been quite a busy schedule too. So I don't know if you would have had time to to rehearse those like any new tracks that we haven't even you know put out yet. So yeah, but it, it's gonna be a beautiful set list. Let me tell I you, I can't wait. I can't wait. Yeah. It's gonna be incredible, man. It's gonna be such a good show. And uh, of course, uh, soil work is soil work on hold for the moment, or have you got more with soil work coming up as well. <laughs> Well, we, that's funny. It's, it's a really intense week uh, coming up here, or we're in it right now, because on Friday, we're going to rehearse with Night Flight. Saturday, we play a festival in Germany with Night Flight. Uh, coming home Sunday. Uh, Monday, we open for Megadeth with Soilwork. 
uh, in Stockholm. And then right after the show, me and Rasmus are taking the night train to Copenhagen where we're flying out to Australia. So there you go. That's the week right there. Man, you're going to need all the energy drinks. <laughs> you yeah, the probably. Energy. It's a lot. Yeah, it's man, it's a lot. Yeah, it's a lot, but it'll be fun. Yeah, man. I can't wait to see you. And uh, feeling to, good. As, as always, I appreciate your time. And, uh, mate, we'll have all the links down here to the tour dates and uh, everything coming up. Mate, take care. Enjoy your uh, shows, and I'll see you in Brisbane. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me on the show. Thank you, brother. I'll see you soon. Okay. Take care. All right, bye. Bye.